Hi, I'm going to talk about vertical water distribution. This is a part of chapter two of our course on groundwater hydrology. Okay, as you know, uh, the, an unconfined aquifer is bounded by a water table at the upper boundary. Okay, so in this schematic figure here, you see this one, this level is the water table. And the water table is at the atmospheric pressure. And this sign here indicate that this is water table and the pressure is at the uh, atmospheric pressure. The region below the water table is called saturated zone, okay? And all the pores within the saturated zone is filled uh, by water, okay? As you can see here, here the brown, are, the, brown, um, the brown color indicates, let's say, sand grains, for example, the sediments, and the blue color indicates the pore spaces that are fully saturated or fully filled by water. Okay, note that the region uh, within uh, the, 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 um, the saturated zone is under positive hydrostatic pressure. And you can simply calculate the hydrostatic pressure, the positive pressure at any given point by knowing the distance between the uh, water table and the point of interest. Okay, if you know this uh, depth, basically, you can simply calculate the positive hydrostatic pressure. Okay, so uh, the region uh, above the water table is under negative pressure, okay, and or is uh, or is under uh, sub sub, atmo sub atmospheric pressure, okay, and that region is called unsaturated zone or vedos zone, okay. Vedos is derived from a uh, from uh, from a Latin word meaning shallow. Okay, some textbooks uh, basically they define uh, the uh, two subzones uh, here, uh, and I thought it doesn't harm to list them here. One is called soil water zone that is extending from the surface of the soil uh, the, down through the major root zone, for example, somewhere here. Okay, and note that the root zone uh, is a function or varies uh, depending on the type of the soil uh, as well as the vegetation and so on. Okay, but let's say it starts from the surface and up to the, I don't know, the bottom of the root zone. And this area is called basically uh, a soil water zone. Okay, and another subzone that is commonly defined in, in, in some textbook uh, is called intermediate water zone that extends from the lower edge of this soil, wat uh, soil water zone that is here, okay, uh, down to the uh, upper limit of the capillary fringe. Okay, and I will explain for you next slide in the next slide that what is capillary fringe. Okay, so this zone is called intermediate uh, water zone. So basically, you have two subzones here. The first one is here, that is called soil water zone, and the second one is this one that is called intermediate water zone. Okay, and there's another definition here that is water is stored in saturated and unsaturated zone is commonly called groundwater, okay, and soil water, respectively. Okay, so I have already mentioned that the, the pressure in the unsaturated zone is, on the, is negative, okay, and, and the, the unsaturated zone, uh, basically, for example, look at here, if you zoom out here, you see the pore space is saturated, is filled by uh, two phases, the blue here indicates, let's say, water, and the white indicate air. Okay, as opposed to the saturated zone where all the pores were fully saturated, fully filled by, by the liquid phase, let's say water. Okay, so what is capillary fringe? So the capillary fringe, uh, let me put this one here. So note, capillary fringe is a nearly saturated zone. Okay, it is a nearly saturated zone, but it is under negative pressure, sub-atmospheric pressure. It's very important uh, to remember that the, the, the pressure is negative throughout the capillary fringe zone. Okay, in other words, in that region, uh, the water is under suction, okay, and it is kind of pulled upward. But the tension, the negative pressure is not sufficient to bring air into the system. Okay, the thickness of the capillary fringe, uh, how thick it is, is a function of the uh, of the basically um, the transport properties or, or pore distribution of your uh, of your aquifer. Okay, so the capillary fringe, the concept of the capillary fringe zone is analogous to the capillary tube experiments that you may have seen in physics or in chemistry classes, where you uh, when, when you dip a, when you um, dip a, a cylindrical glass tube called capillary into water, uh, water rises uh, through this capillary, okay? The same kind of concept can be used to explain the capillary fringe, okay? But to, uh, to kind of understand
understand these capillary tube um, experiments, you need to know more about the surface tension and contact angle, okay, to understand this capillary rise concept. And I will explain that uh, in the next uh, video. I hope uh, you found this video helpful. Thank you.